If you come to the doctor with abnormal vaginal bleeding, the doctor is going to have to try to figure out why you're bleeding. And so the doctor is going to order some tests as well as do a physical exam. Now, the physical exam might include a bimanual exam where the doctor puts their fing his fingers in your vagina and pushes on your tummy to feel the size of the uterus and your ovaries to see if your uterus feels enlarged. We also do a speculum exam to look inside and look at the cervix to make sure there isn't something on the cervix that's bleeding, uh, a lesion on the cervix, or maybe a polyp coming through the cervix, and that can certainly cause you to bleed. There are also going to be some tests ordered, and the first thing that needs to be determined when we're trying to figure out why you're bleeding is are you bleeding because of something dangerous, for instance a cancer or a precancer, or is your bleeding more on the annoying side? The test that's most commonly done to rule out a cancer or a precancer is something called an endometrial biopsy. It may be done at that visit or it may be done at a subsequent visit. The biopsy does tend to cramp um, and can be a little painful, so sometimes people like to come back after having taken some Motrin beforehand. Um, the endometrial biopsy is a little office procedure. You'll be able to um, go back to your usual uh, activities um, after the procedure is done. Uh, but that procedure gets a little bit of tissue to send to pathology to see really what's going on inside your uterus. So that's one thing that can be ordered. Another thing uh, would be an ultrasound. The ultrasound will look at the overall shape and size of the uterus, but can also evaluate what's called the endometrial stripe. Now the inside of the uterus is called the endometrium, and that's the part that sheds when you have your period. That endometrium can be thin or it can be thick. A thick endometrium tells us there's a lot of tissue there. And so the endometrial stripe, if it's very thin, can tell us, can reassure us that there's probably not something dangerous in there. If the stripe is thicker, then we don't really know why it's thick and it's hard to tell exactly what's there. And that in and of itself could be an indication for an endometrial biopsy. Along with the ultrasound, sometimes we can do uh, what's called hydrosonography. Um, in which a little bit of water is pushed through the cervix into the uterus, and that can show the inner contents of the uterus a little bit more clearly, particularly good for telling us if there's polyps inside the uterus. So that's another test uh, that might be done. Blood tests are also important, especially checking to make sure that you're not anemic. The degree of anemia gives us some idea about how much bleeding you're having. So if you come in and tell me that you've been bleeding really heavily for the last 60 days nonstop, and I check your hemoglobin, and it's normal, it doesn't mean that you're not bleeding heavy, but it does mean that your body is able to keep up with the amount of blood loss. So the amount of blood that you're losing, your body's able to regenerate it so that you're not overall losing blood. And it tells me something about the amount of bleeding that you're really having. Now, if on the other hand, I check your hemoglobin, I check your blood count, and I found out that you're very anemic, well, that means that there's a bigger problem, that your body is losing so much blood that it's not able to keep up with it. And in fact, sometimes that can be quite low. And in fact, I have had patients that have needed to have blood transfusions because they've lost so much blood from vaginal bleeding. So that's a very key test, again, to see if there's something dangerous going on. If you're getting so, your hemoglobin is getting so low, you've lost so much blood that you're in a danger range. So a complete blood count or a CBC or a hemoglobin is something that we'll often order um, to see how much bleeding you're having. We can also order different hormones depending on what we're worried about. One of the hormones that may sound interesting is, to, is a thyroid hormone. And the reason that is, is that if your thyroid is not in right balance, that can affect your menstruation. And so one of the very common reasons for abnormal bleeding is an abnormal thyroid. In that case, the treatment isn't to treat the uterus, but to treat the thyroid. And you need thyroid medicine, not uterine medicine. So that's a test that we often will check something called a TSH, which checks the level of thyroid hormone. There are other hormones that also might be checked, an FSH, for instance, if we're worried that you're premenopausal. Um, some people do an LH, uh, but honestly, that test is a little bit uh, less useful. Um, a prolactin is another test that can be ordered. Um, again, that is another hormone uh, that really is made from the brain. It's the hormone that, that makes you lactate and also can affect your menstruation. So generally, if you come in with vaginal bleeding, we're going to want to do something to check the structure of your uterus to see if you have something organic like a fibroid or a polyp that's causing your bleeding. And that's usually done with an ultrasound as well, of course, a physical exam. We may need to sample the inside of the uterus to make sure you don't have a cancer or precancer. That would be done with an endometrial biopsy. We're going to see the amount of bleeding that you're having and whether your body's keeping up with it with a blood count. And we'll also probably do some blood tests to check 
other hormonal levels to give us an idea of why you're bleeding. Medtwice.com. <laughs>